Welcome to another video. This is the interpretation I gave a problem that I found in the Harvard MIT math tournament of 2011. I've answered other questions from that same um, set of questions and this one I thought was easy. Now the original question did not look like this. It was just a bunch of words. So let me show you what the words are. Let A, B, C, D be a square of side length 13. Let E and F be points on rays A, B and A, D respectively, so that the area of square A, B, C, D equals the area of triangle A, E, F if E, F intersects B, C at X and B, X equals 6. Determine D, F. That's what the question was. But this was my interpretation of it. So, let's get into the video. So we basically have a square A, B, C, D, and we're told that points E and F are points on the rays A, B, and A, D. Now watch this. This is the line, this is a line segment AB, but if you call it a ray, it means it goes infinitely to the left and infinitely to the right. And then they tell us that E is a point on the ray. In your imagination, E might be on this side or on this side. So it is better to guess both directions. Now, if we go here, it says that the point F is on this ray also, so you can go, it might be on top here, it might be below. So when you sketch your picture, it might be different from what I've sketched. But this is where you begin to see the full picture of it. The instruction says there is a point of intersection, there is X. That is the line EF, this ray intersects BC at the point X. So now you know that what you're talking about is not down here. What you're talking about has to be here because there's an intersection on the other side. So this is how the picture shows. Once you're able to get this third part, everything else is easy. And then the rest of the information is that the area of the square is equal to the area of the triangle AEF or AFE, however you call it. And we're supposed to find what X is given the dimension of bx to be 6. We know if bx is 6, then the remaining have to be 7 because the side of the square is 13. That's it. So now that by interpreting the sentences, we have been able to sketch this, we just need to do the math. And the math is where the work is. No, the interpretation might just be 50% of the task. And now, let's solve this. Okay, what I'm going to do is I want to find the area of the square. Well, we know the area of a square is just the side squared, which is 13 squared. Let me write those facts now. Okay, area A, B, C, D is equal to 13 squared, which is 169. So I'm done. Let's put a line here. So I'm done with that. The next thing is to find the area of the triangle. Now, look, this is a right triangle because it is formed based on the two sides of a square. So it's a right triangle and we can find the area of a right triangle by saying it is half base, half the base times height. Um, this is 13. I need to know the length from B to E so I don't know it. I'm gonna call it letter H. Okay, I'm gonna call it H. Now, what else do I need? I need to know the height. Already I know the height of this triangle. It's going to be 13 plus x. So area A, F, E, this, the triangle will be 1 half times the base. What is the base? It is 13 plus h multiplied by the height. The height is 13 plus x. So, based on what I have, I will be able to solve for x because they told me that the two are the same. I just need to know what h is. That's it. If I can know what h is, I can say this 
is equal to this. Let me actually write it out, should I? Um, let me leave it for now, okay? I'm gonna come back to it. So how can we find H from what we have here? There's something that's very obvious because you're getting a bunch of right triangles. You see, this is a right triangle. This is a right triangle. This also is a right triangle. So I can actually use, because I don't have any information about the hypotenuse of each of them, I'll have to be sticking to tangents, okay? So I know from my geometry that I learned in eighth grade or ninth grade or whatever time, even before you took it in 10th grade, that this angle here is theta. And this angle and this angle are congruent angles. Why? Because um, these two are parallel and this is a transversal line. So you see these two angles are corresponding angles. So this is theta also. So I know that the tangent of this angle, tan theta, is going to be 6 over h. It's also going to be equal to um, x 13 plus x over 13 plus h, which is opposite over adjacent. So there's so many ways you can find your h relative to x. Oh, but for this triangle, there's another triangle here. So this angle is the same thing as this angle. So let's call this angle theta also. Okay, so let's call this side, if this is H, let's, let's call this A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K. Let me call this length K. Okay, K will be the length from here to here. And so I know that this side here is going to be 13 minus K. The side here is 13 minus K. That's what the length of this is because everything is K. So I think I can figure out what the relationship is going to be. So now let's go. Let's just write a bunch of trig ratios. The tangent of this angle is opposite over adjacent. So I know that tan theta is equal to x over 13 minus k. Here, tan theta is opposite over adjacent. It's going to be equal to 7 over k. And I know in this triangle, tan theta is going to be opposite over adjacent, 6 over h. And by the way, because my focus is on x, everything I do has to be in terms of x. So I want to shrink everything as quickly as possible so that the only thing I'm seeing is x, because that's what I'm looking for. And I already have two things that are equal to each other. One is in terms of x and h, so I want to get rid of this h. And this is it. This is the secret. Tangent theta. Okay. Um, so already I have k in this and this. I don't want k. So I'm going to write k in terms of x. Okay? So if I use these two together, I have x times k. Let's say kx will be equal to 13 times 7 will be 91 minus 7k. So if I pull this here, I'm going to have kx plus 7k equals 91, which means that k is equal to 91 over x plus 7. That's what k is. Almost there. Now I go here, I'm, I'm, I'm going to connect these two together. Also, I know that 7 over k is equal to 6 over h. So if I if I isolate h, I'm going to have h is equal to 6k over 7. So that means h will be equal to 6 over 7 times k. But what is k? 91 over x plus 7. So it's going to be 91 over x plus 7. I'm multiplying. Now if I do this multiplication, it tells me that h has to be 7 will divide 91 how many times? 13 times, right? Yes. And what is 6 times 13? That's 78. So h is equal to 78 over x plus 7. Now, it means 
this h can be replaced by 78 over x plus 7 and my, I have an equation that is exclusively in terms of x. So I'm going to go here and say this is equal to 1 half, half base. My base is 13 plus 78 over x plus 7 times 13 plus x. And this area of the triangle is equal to 169. That's the equation. Should I get rid of this? No. Let's keep going. So now, firstly, I need to find a way to multiply this in the most um, impressive way. No. Actually, let me see. This is equal to 169. So let's say 169 okay, is equal to this. I just brought this here. Now I am going to multiply both sides by 2. And I'm going to make, give this a common denominator and see what comes out of it. Okay, so here we're going to have 169 times 2 is 300. And we'll just write 2. I'm just going to write 2 times 169. 2 times 169 let's use parenthesis, will be equal to, now if I multiply this by 13, this is 13 times x, this is going to be equal to 13x um, plus 91 plus 78 over x plus 7 times 13 plus x. Okay, let's go. Okay, so this is going to be 2 times 169 is equal to 13x plus 169. <laughs> it looks so beautiful. So this is going to be 13x plus 169 over x plus 7 times... 13 plus x, or let's say x plus 13. Okay, what do I have? If I factor out 13 here, I'm going to have 13 into x plus 13 over x plus 7 times x plus 13. Ah, it's beginning to look really, really juicy here now. So this is 2 times 169. Okay, so let's get rid of this 13 by dividing both sides by 13, which is 26, will be equal to, if we multiply the top, we're going to have x squared plus 26x plus 169 over x plus 7. I believe there's an easier way for me to simplify this. I'm just probably going the long way. I could have done something easier here. I don't know, but it's just algebra, okay? Let's, let's follow it where it leads. And here we go. If I multiply both sides by, I'm going to have 26x plus 26 times 7 is going to be 182. Okay, so that's going to be 182 equals x squared plus 26x plus 169. Okay, what good comes out of this? <sighs> this takes this out. So what I have is, if I bring 169 here, I have no way. 182 minus 169 is 13. So I have x squared is equal to 13 so that x is the square root of 13. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.